Well, hello everyone. My name is Dean Pompilio, and we are about to embark on a Metasploit adventure. I've got a bunch of great things I want to show all of you. Uh, we're going to learn a lot of different techniques, get to see a lot of different tools, and hopefully give you a chance to build up your pen testing confidence and your pen testing uh, toolkit to the point where you feel comfortable sitting down and going to work right away. All right, so where do we begin? Metasploit. This is a uh, Rapid7 product. Some of you may be familiar with the company. They also make uh, fantastic scanners like Nexpose. And uh, unfortunately, Nexpose is not uh, currently compatible with the version of Kali that I'm using for this course. So um, if I decide to run it on a separate uh, Windows VM later, maybe we'll, we'll compare some scan results between Nexpose and uh, Nessus, for instance. In any case, uh, Metasploit is the, um, the penetration testing framework that we'll be exploring. There's a lot of different aspects to Metasploit. Uh, as we can see, there is a free download. And this is uh, basically the equivalent of what you get when you install Kali Linux. And we'll cover that just here in a minute. But the, uh, the one thing that you can get by downloading this uh, free version of Metasploit is the Community Edition, which is a, a web-based uh, interface for Metasploit. And the web-based interface is, is pretty handy for a lot of different things. We'll start out with the text-based interface, but eventually we will work our way over to the, uh, to the GUI. We'll also explore Armitage, which is another GUI interface. That one's uh, actually older than the, the, uh, the web-based interface, from, from my knowledge anyway. So we'll, we'll try both of those, uh, and then we'll also do a lot of work with the command line. I personally prefer the command line. I think that you, you can learn the tool much better, more thoroughly. You can also understand at a, at a lower level how the different actions take place within the framework and the interaction with the database is much more uh, direct. So we'll start there and then work our way up to some of the, the time-saving features of using the uh, the GUIs. Okay, so on to Kali. Uh, if you'll notice, I'm at uh, Kali.org. This is the website where you can download your pen testing platform. And what we'll, what we'll be doing here in this next segment is uh, going over the the basic setup to get your your penetration testing lab up and running. So there are several components which are required in order to make this uh, course possible. One of the first things we want to think about is VMware Workstation. Uh, I have work, uh, Workstation 12 Pro. I highly recommend it if you have the money to spend uh, on a product like this. It's a huge time saver if you do a lot of work with virtual machines. I'm not sure about the exact price because I've upgraded a few times, but I think it's about 250 to 300 um, US dollars. Otherwise, if you don't have the uh, the funds to or, or the need to use Workstation Pro, you can always go to always go to VMware.com helps if you spell it right and go to their download section and you'll notice that you have VMware Player. There it is. So VMware Player is free, which is nice. And uh, you can get this for Windows or, or Linux systems, as you can see. Uh, and the Player really does offer a similar amount of functionality to uh, Workstation. Some of the big differences are VMware Player does not allow you to uh, capture a snapshot, for instance. And there's a couple other uh, advanced features that the workstation offers. The ability to have all of your VMs uh, in a tabbed interface, for instance, and just some other nice features, uh, being able to set up a server for VMware clients to connect to. We're not going to really use any of those features, too many of those features, rather, for this course. But regardless, VMware Player is here available. Uh, if you have another player that you like to use, you can certainly 
uh, try to uh, use these same VMs with that uh, player of your choice. If you like the uh, Microsoft Hyper-V player or uh, a virtual box from Oracle, for instance, you might be able to find ways to get this software to work. But the class is designed around VMware Workstation and Kali Linux and uh, Metasploitable. So you might be wondering what Metasploitable is. I know I'm kind of jumping around here a little bit, but I think you'll agree that Metasploitable is a fantastic resource. We can see Offensive Security offers this. And uh, you can download it from a bunch of different places. Uh, but the um, you do have to register with, with Rapid7's website in order to, to get uh, Metasploitable. And what this is, is a virtual machine which has intentional vulnerabilities. And these vulnerabilities are due to things like lack of patching or uh, using software that has known bugs that just hasn't been uh, removed or shut down. There are several different ways to go about attacking this, this virtual machine. And I think that uh, if you can grab this VM in addition to the Kali VM, you should be able to replicate all of the, the labs that we'll be doing and the demonstrations that I'll be doing throughout this course. There are some basic things to think about. For instance, let's go back to our Kali Linux. Uh, we can download Kali Linux from the Kali.org website. Uh, you'll notice we have several different versions here. Depending on if you have a VMware Workstation or VMware Player, uh, you, you can download pre-built uh, virtual uh, machines that will work with those, soft, those uh, pieces of software. Uh, I had a little bit of trouble with the latest version of Kali uh, downloading it as a, uh, a VMware image. But in any case, downloading the ISO image is pretty straightforward. So you simply download this, save it to a, uh, a location of your choosing. I'm just going to cancel that since I don't need it. And then you simply open up the, the image in your VMware Player or in VMware Workstation. So going back to Workstation, once I have the, the ISO image downloaded, I just create a new virtual machine. This is similar if you have VMware Player. And then we just point it to the ISO image file, wherever that is. So there's my Kali Linux ISO image. So it'll take a moment to read the file. All right, it tells me it cannot detect the operating system. That's fine. Uh, if you're using VMware Player and you want to do the same operation, you basically go to the File menu. Uh, there should be an option there that says Open or New. And you do the same thing. You point to the ISO image. And we'll click Next. Uh, this is a guest operating system of Linux. Debian 6 64-bit should do the job. You have a lot to choose from here. But uh, Linux, uh, Kali Linux is based on Debian, and uh, six, version 6, 64-bit is the uh, setting that I used with, with the last version. So we'll go ahead and click Next, and I'll call this um, Kali Test, because I already have my Kali image, but we're going to just kind of step through this a little bit so you can see what it looks like. All right, on to the disk size. Uh, the default comes up with 20 gig. Uh, if you got the space on your, your hard drive, I recommend upping that to 30. You can also use the uh, buttons here if you like. But 30 gig is good because if, if, if you build a fully functional pen testing instance of Kali and you start adding more tools and uh, if you got some databases with a bunch of your uh, information, the size can grow. It's better to just plan ahead. I always uh, prefer to have my disk as a single file if you're moving VMs around. Uh, this is a little bit more convenient and depending on how you partition your disk or how you provision your disk rather, uh, you might have some different care, uh, considerations for how much space you'll eventually use. Uh, but we'll just change this to store the disk as a single file. Uh, we'll look at our hardware. Notice that the uh, network setting is NAT. This is important. 
I'm at my uh, settings for the VM right now. If you um, if you want to keep your your pen testing VM relatively safe from the network that you're on, you should at least be using NAT mode. This means that I'll be sharing my IP address with my host. I am allowed to get out to the internet from this VM, but I'm just basically using different source ports when I make connections to the outside. If you're concerned about complete isolation and complete privacy for doing your pen testing work, then you can go into host only mode. So when the VM boots, it'll get an address that's local to your host itself and cannot get to the outside network. For our purposes, we're going to use NAT because we want to be able to get to the internet. We want to be able to do certain things which require internet access. Oh, by the way, got a great t-shirt on here. I want to show everyone. Hope you're having fun with the Cybrary. I know it's a, it's a nice pleasure to be able to contribute to the, uh, to the videos. I know a lot of people really are getting a lot of benefit from this.